Capital. Jonathan Davis is an economist and a wealth manager in Hertfordshire. Oh, my word. What's he going to say today? Hello, Jonathan. Hey, good morning, Jonathan. Oh, good morning. I'm, I'm sensing by the end of this conversation, Jonathan, I'm not going to feel positive about myself, the country, the economy, or indeed the future of the human race. Would I be right? <laughs> um, to be serious, I, I think you put the nail on the head quite rightly with Roddy Cohn there. Um, you were quite right to um, hammer the point that uh, the government has increased borrowings to a huge extent, so much so that this Chancellor has borrowed even more money than Gordon Brown. And that is the most remarkable thing that I can see in economics. And, you know, you and I, our generation, we're basically OK. I mean, OK, uh, there are lots of people who um, are not doing brilliantly well, but in essence, our generation and the retirees are basically OK. I really feel for the next generation and the one after that, because, you know, the vast amount of money that this government owes, it's now £1.5 trillion, £1,500 billion, and that's only the amount of money that they admit to. And they're borrowing about a hundred billion pounds a year. And who's going to have to pay it back? The next generation. Which means that you can basically, over the next 20, 30 years, say goodbye to the welfare state. That is why you're seeing kids coming out of college and university with vast debts and going to jobs on the minimum wage and so on and so forth. That's what these people have to look forward to. I knew it. I knew that I would talk to you, Jonathan, and I would be seriously concerned about the future. So what what would you do then differently? What do you think yep. the next Chancellor of the Exchequer, whether that is George Osborne again or whether it is somebody completely different, what would you advise them to do? Yep. Well, first of all, whatever I will say, it will not happen because politicians will always go down the easiest route. They will never make the hard decisions that we took largely in the 1980s, which allowed Britain to hold its head up high economically and politically around the world for the first time in 30 years. But in essence, what we should be doing is the opposite of what we should be doing, what we are doing. We should, one, let the market set interest rates. This, in effect, Effect zero interest rate policy only keeps things going for so long and of course it decimates the income of retirees. Um, secondly, um, uh, we should ban intervention in the housing market. The chap before talked about the extraordinary price of house prices. You and I have talked about it many times. Help to buy should be abolished. It should not have been there in the first place because you know what help to buy is? It's the younger generation uh, lending, in effect, to the younger generation today. Think about that. That's what help to buy is. We should also radically reduce government spending. I don't care what they say that this person and that person will be detrimentally affected. I'll tell you who will be most affected. The rich would be most affected because the asset prices would fall and it would hurt them in their pockets. We'd become a much more equal society. This would not be painless but it would be a couple or maybe a few years of pain and then prosperity. This way, we've had six years since the Great Recession, as they call it, of uh, incomes falling uh, in relation to the cost of living. Six years. And this can only continue in the long term. So what do we want? Short-term pain and long-term growth? or long-term pain, because that's what we have. Oh, dear. Well, Jonathan, thanks very much indeed. You're welcome. Jonathan Davis, who's an economist and a wealth manager in Hertfordshire.